So um, whenever you're ready, Jeff, if you want to start. So okay, I think you um, I think you mentioned the last couple of meetings that we should do a roll call for the city council yeah. or the mm -hmm. city of Larkspur. So um, um, let's see, Andy, are you present? He's present. Okay, Jonathan, looks like you're present. Present. Michelle. Here. And Armel, are you here? I think Armel was the um, only one who That's said that right. she may be absent because she was flying back from Texas. That's right. So we have a quorum with us four, so mm -hmm. we're, we're good. And then um, we should approve the consent calendar if someone would like to make a motion to approve that, which includes the minutes from our last meeting. I'll make a motion to approve. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Um, do we have public comment from anyone? Let me check. So far, no, it looks like we're okay right now. Okay, okie dokie. Uh, board member reports and comments. Does anybody have something that we've unraveled since in the last month or comments? Nothing on my end. No, nothing nope. here. I just continue to have fallout of Michelle. Um, <laughs> down and that it seems to be rampant through the community and it's uh, but we will survive somehow it'll be okay yeah, thank you michelle um and so now we're at the franklin we're at the library director's oral report okay so um as you know we did reopen last thursday we originally were going to try to use Qlis as a, an appointment software to um have people sort of queue. Um, unfortunately, the queue the software cannot handle the volume of people that we want. Um, so it was it was really frustrating because we originally had, I had asked this question weeks ago, could it handle more than one? And she first said no. And then Teresa went to a training and they, she asked the same question. And the lady said, oh yeah, it can, it can. So we, we did all the stuff that we needed to do to add more resources, to add more stuff but it would only let us call one person at a time. <laughs> so uh, it just became too much of a hassle because um, really we just need to make sure that we don't hit our capacity limit, which right now is 14 people. So as long as four pe 14 people don't come in all at once, um, we're okay. Um, so what we decided to do is we'll use this, well, right now too, we're, we're still shorthanded. We haven't gotten um, our extra staff that we were supposed to be, I was hoping that we'd have on board by now. Um, HR has been super slow. Um, we barely have the library aid applications looked at, and we'll be doing interviews on the 21st. We have not even begun the librarian position recruitment. We've started the recruitment, but we still need to do the interview process, and that takes a long time. So we're right now we're running. We're I realized we shouldn't have opened when we did. Um, it's just we just don't have enough staff to meet the demand, and so at the moment when we do open to the public, we're just not offering reference services just because. There's only, and right now two Bobby's on vacation. So it's just me, Teresa and Anna and our one page Richard. And so to do reference services, because it does take time, um, we've decided just not to do it on Tuesdays and Thursdays. So eventually we'll use that QLA software to make an appointment with the librarian. So we just gotta get that up and going and get people used to making appointments with us. A lot of them are just so used to us helping them right there on the spot. And they do take a lot of time and a lot of telephone calls that take a lot of time as well. So we're just trying not to, we're trying not to do it, but me and it's, Teresa do catch ourselves helping people because if it's really small and simple, we'll try to help you as quickly as we can. But it's just trying to watch the door and man the desk and answer the phones. It's just really hard with the, just a few of us. So we've decided just to go back to let people walk in. We're taking an hourly door count. Um, on yesterday, on Tuesday, the first hour, we did have 17 people within a full hour come in, um, but it wasn't at one time. So we didn't have to lock the door. So we did get a little open sign that's in the window um, that's helping people see that, that we're open. I think people also think they're so used to the curbside now that if they don't see the canopy, they think the library is closed. Um, and then we've had people who are just so used to curbside they don't want to come inside to get their books. <laughs> they just call us and they want to come and get their curbside when it's outside. So we've had people go, oh, no, no, I'll come tomorrow. I'll come, I'll come the next day when you're doing curbside. So we do have those patrons. Um, today was one of those days where um, it was rather slow for curbside, um, but just because we think people are um, 
getting used to, I think also people are going back to work. So that's a, a huge step too, that we have less and less people during the day. So we'll see how tomorrow goes. Tomorrow's really going to be a test because it's only, like I said, the three of us. Um, and today I wasn't doing well too. I haven't felt good today. Um, so it was just one of those days where, you know, everything went wrong today. <laughs> But it, we're, we're everything, everything's getting up and going. Um, we're just trying to catch back up with stuff. Um, if you saw that we really, I didn't have a chance to, I'm behind on the May um, schedule. We do have um, an author event scheduled. We have an event with um, Dewey Livingston from the historical, uh, the California room from um, the county who will be doing a program this month uh, for us on the history of Larkspur and Greenbrae. Um, and then next month we'll have more um, live uh, garden talks. We did have one um, garden talk this month um, with Donna Miller. We had we gave away 175 tickets, but only um, 60 people came to the garden talk. So we hopefully the recording is doing really well, but we'll see. But I know without Joe there pressing them, it's been hard to get um, <laughs> get the gardeners to talk as much as I'd like to get them to talk. And then some of the stuff they've done. We've done it too close together when another library has done it. So we don't get the attendance, like the fire smart one, which um, we think we should be doing more of those, especially during the drought, um, to get more talks about that going. Um, it's the last one I was sort of disappointed. We just didn't get as much, as many people in attendance as we did the last previous ones from last year. But I think we just did it too close to San Anselmo's. So we just, we're hitting the same audience. So it's sort of oversaturated. And we have another one that's coming up because I think um, they finally finished the little video. Um, so we'll be doing another one. Oh, there's our mouse. So, so everybody's here now. So um, what else is um, going on? Um, we, sh we have three of the laptops ready to go. Um, we've only used one laptop so far, but no one's checked it out to the, um, I mean, it was just because the first day we opened um, our computer decided it wasn't going to cooperate with us. So we had to um, pull out the laptop so they could get onto the computer. So, um, but otherwise the, the computers are ready to go out. We have, Dan's going to sign off on the policy. If you've all seen the policy, the only changes we made to it was to add, make it seven days. So we matched the rest of the libraries around us. But um, we're, we're getting those um, going. Um, so I, also the big thing too is we just had our, um, budget review at city council. So um, I did make a presentation to the council and get that pulled up for you guys. So like I said last time, the only thing we gotten feedback on was the, um, was just some of our goals. So we, we updated our goals, but I did a presentation last week to council let me get this so I can share it with you guys. So we just went through the, um, hopefully you guys can see it, so. Yes, looks good, thank you. So we, I just made a presentation to council. It was a, a four hour meeting. Um, and since I was a new person, I got to go almost last. So, uh, <laughs> so let's see, did it did in department order backwards. So I kept thinking I was going to go first because community services is first, but um, he did it the other way. So we just went over um, stuff that we're doing. Um, the remote, oh, come on, computer. Okay, this is not helping. <laughs> Sorry about this, guys. It's what happens when you don't have your mouse. Um, so uh, we just talked about, you know, remote services. We talked about, um, you know, our virtual programming, story times, our author events. Um, we actually had somebody come today excited for story time, not realizing we're still doing it online. We're not doing in-person presentations yet. Um, we talked about curbside service and then um, how much we've been doing. And as you know, we've been circulating about 14 items a week um, during curbside. And then we just went into talking about the reopening of the library. So this was the excitement. We are still waiting to hear back from DTEC on the um, actual production of our locker. They are now behind because they can't get the computer for the, the locker. So they still can't give me a date when it will be complete. 
gave, um, and then we just talked about our goals, um, is getting the DTEC locker installed. You know, we're trying to get the collection prepared for RFID. The county has um, given us a lot of money, or at least given MarinNet money to start the RFID process. Um, we're hoping once the COVID restrictions lift that we can fully reopen the library, return the furniture back inside. Um, and Cause right now it is just pretty much a display. The staff I think now are a little better at realizing that people aren't staying, going to stay as long as they have. We've only had one issue with one patron who would not wear their mask properly. Um, and um, we were just trying to rush him through, but we've only had the one incident so far. And then we just went over to recreation and talked about what recreation is doing. And we're still um, in the same boat as recreation when it comes to programming because we don't know um, what the restrictions will be in June once the state switches over to this new, new guidelines. And we talked about summer camp, um, community garden, and then talked about trying to figure out ways that we could partner the, the departments together on our programming in the future. Um, yeah. Okay, so it's stopping the share now. There we go. So th that was, it was pretty much um, a nice presentation. I, I think I woke council up after the, their long, long, long meeting <laughs> to go over our, um, our goals and stuff. But so far, the, everything looks good. Um, I still haven't seen the full budget yet because I haven't got the numbers back from finance. But so far, they haven't asked for any additional cuts. I still just hope that in the future that we will have some more of our budget restored um, next year. So right now, the only restoration we've had was to um, the librarian position and to hire a library aide. So that that will um, is, is still carrying over from the mid-year budget. So that's pretty much it for now, guys. Okay, does anybody have any questions for Franklin on the director's report or on the old business things? on our agenda. Okay, then, um, well, the new business item, Franklin, looks like the one is, the first one we should get out of the way is to change the meeting for the June meeting, June, July, and August, I guess. Yeah, so this is, again, um, the, the meeting time isn't um, working as well as we thought it would be. Um, so I just propose that we move it back to the second Monday this would also, um, it would affect my schedule just because um, I realized too, I need to have a better balance between my two departments um, and working on Monday when the library is closed would let me focus more on um, recreation department because as we get closer to reopening, um, there are more demands um, in recreation and I only have one person over there right now who's trying to handle everything. And um, we are hoping that when we do the library aid recruitment, that we can use that recruitment to find somebody who would be willing to work at the recreation office to assist, but um, working on Monday too, but I think this would work better for the, the board since um, I think most of you are available on Mondays much better than the Wednesdays have been going, so. I, I yeah, Mondays, are, Mondays are a lot better for me, I apologize. Wednesdays just this spring were kind of crazy, so. Mondays Those, just even slower. Those three Mondays work for me, Franklin. They do for me too. Okay, so I just need you guys to make a motion so we can adopt the, the changes. Okay. <laughs> um, I'm, uh, I just want to double check. I'm just looking at each of the three, August 9th. Yep, I think, I think good I have, on mine. I have, I have plans for the June, but that's the only one I will not be able to okay. attend. Okay. Um, I am going to be out of town on July 12th, but I'm good on the other two. We could get a quorum. Yeah, I think we we'll have a quorum in July. Um, and I think I think by then, because um, Michelle's last meeting is next June, um, her last meeting, and then hopefully in July the new board member would be um, coming on board. Okay, so I move that we move. <laughs> I move that. We reschedule the meeting to the second Monday of the coming months. I'll second that. Okay. All in favor? Give me two. Thanks. Aye. 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 Um, 
Okay, so the next thing is our um, community groups update, I think, isn't it, Franklin? Is that the next thing on the list? No, the, the next thing is, uh, it's the um, introduction. It was, this is a, an, an opportunity for the Commons to introduce Serena. This is why it's on um, the board. So now we can hand the floor over yeah. to Joe and Serena. So. Oh, great. Welcome, Joe. Welcome, Serena. Thank Hi, you. everybody. We're almost to summer. <laughs> Close. I want to introduce, uh, so first off, um, Everything's going extremely well with the Commons Foundation. Um, we'll be shortly putting up a thermometer fundraising sign on the property. Uh, we're doing significant uh, donor meetings right now. Um, and I know that you're all offended that you haven't had your significant donor meeting yet, but you know that will happen. And I wanted to introduce you to Serena Darcy Fisher, who, um, is making a huge difference in our outreach and our strategy and how we interact with people. Um, and I just wanted you all to meet her and to get a sense from her about how she envisions um, philanthropy and getting the library funded and built. So you're tired of hearing from me. So Serena, by all means. <laughs> Thank you. Well, I appreciate the opportunity to meet you. And um, I know I've met Franklin before. Mm -hmm. And uh, so um, I've been involved in nonprofits for over 40 years here in the US and abroad. And I've worked on three major capital campaigns, um, most recently for the Vivalon Whistle Stop campaign, downtown San Rafael, that was a 10 million campaign. And prior to that with Spirit Rock Meditation Center for their major uh, campaign, and then with Esalen Institute. So, um, I was part of uh, the group that did the feasibility study initially for the library and uh, Joe hired me directly to help with the campaign. And um, just my experience really shows that uh, it's about relationships, it's not transactional and it really requires a community to get behind the project and each reach out in every way they can to make introductions. And this, this project has such a potential for transformation in the Larkspur community, but not just Larkspur, in the whole Ross Valley. Mm -hmm. It's major. And so we're reaching out to people in the quiet phase of the campaign, which means that we're looking for 80% of the fundraising goal of 5 million from lead gifts and major gifts, mm -hmm. anything from 50,000 and up to a million or beyond. Um, our goal is to reach that, uh, that financial goal by November next year. And we'd like to do a community campaign next year, hopefully when we've got to the 80%. Uh, it's harder to raise a lot of smaller gifts than it is to raise a few bigger gifts. And usually 20% of the donors give 80% of the, the financial goal. So it's been an absolute joy working with Joe. He's so hard working. She's lying. She's yeah. lying. <laughs> he's, his outreach and he's tireless, which makes it impossible for me to lag. Um, but we do a great tag team. Uh, we've got a good champion team going. And uh, each of us is reaching out and trying to expand our influence and our opportunities to present this project to people. So I really do invite you to help us think through who, who we should be talking to. Uh, it's an absolute no pressure presentation. People should be informed about what's going on in their community and the opportunity it's going to provide them. Um, and we welcome their input and their questions. And if they see themselves on that pyramid, we're delighted. And if they can't, or if, even if they can, we hope they will help us fill that pyramid, which is basically our financial goal and the levels we're trying to reach. So it's very important to help the community help us reach out to people and make the introductions, open the doors for us to do these presentations. And the presentations take half an hour and they're all done by Zoom, which is so convenient and nobody has to travel and they get to see this wonderful architectural, conceptual architectural stuff that Scott Lockhart is doing. Um, we're actually having our first donor event and prospect event uh, on June 2nd 
to um, highlight Scott and his work. I'm not sure if you are familiar with Scott's work around the world, but uh, he's a pretty phenomenal conceptual architectural designer. And he's the one who's done these drawings for the, the commons. So we're hoping that will be a big attractor and get more people interested in the project. Um, and so we'll be doing sort of targeting who we'll invite to that event, but please do send names and any help you can give us by opening the doors is so appreciated. Any, any questions that you have on fundraising? <laughs> it's called fun raising, by the way. <laughs> I have a question. Yes. So the, these names um, for your invitations, where do you want them sent? Uh, you can send them to Joe or to me. Thank you. And okay, Joe, I have so I'll yes. send yeah. to Joe. Because yes, that's I don't fine. Your, Thank you. I don't have your email, Serena. I'll, in fact, I'll send it to you all. Yeah. That's a good point, Armel. By the way, I, I have to tell you, we're still using um, the research that Armel collected when she volunteered with us in 2019. Um, so I hate to tell you, Armel, your work lives on. <laughs> That's a good thing, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, it is. It that is. Was, it was pretty. It was pretty detailed. It works. It's, uh, it's just, it needs to be built on. Twenty nineteen is a long way. We need to move uh, move on. So I'll I'll add names. Um, Thank you very them. much. That will be great, Armel. Yeah, and what My we can often do is provide an email, that, a draft email that you can then personalize to invite people to find out more about the project. Is is this prospect meeting uh, on the website? Is it Not yet. No, and we probably won't put it on the website because it's more by invitation. Correct. So what that would be, would be um, anybody or just mostly major donors? Um, you know, Armel, that's a good question. I think um, it's, I, I'm trying to find the people who are most motivated. And if they could be big donors, great. But um, this is a, a um, we, we need people who can talk to people. We need people who can become major donors. We can need people who can help us plan the community phase. So I'd say if, if it, you all are the core of the library people, we're looking for the library people. And it's interesting. I've been surprised both by who people know and who they can introduce us to and also how generous they've been. Well, this, this is great news, Joe. So thanks, it's exciting. It's And thank you, Serena, very much for this. In fact, you're just those, what you just said um, made me think of people that I need to get in contact with to hand off to you guys. Yes. That could be, I mean, I think you do need somebody like the library board people who are so connected to the issue to just sort of introduce what's going, what's going to happen to people that we might know and who might have capacity. And so this is very exciting. Yeah. And well, I thank you. That's very encouraging for me to hear. Uh, Jeff, so, so thank you. And we do have naming opportunities for those that are interested in it at a, a lead gift level. Um, and our plan is to do something with donor recognition and prospect quarterly and to keep communicating with people in the community about what's happening. And the door is always open for a presentation. Yeah. I mean, I just want to plant the seed in some people's heads that this is a thing that they should be a part of and should want to be a part of because they don't know. And they aren't necessarily from Larkspur, but they drive by there every single day, I'm sure. And they want to see that community, you know, become, you know, see wonderful things happening on their, as they enter their back home, whether they're going to Ross or Kent Woodlands or into Larkspur. Right, we're reaching out to people in Greenbrae, Corte Madeira, Kentfield, Ross, because it will be a major center for all folks in the Ross Valley eventually. Yeah, we had one of the meetings in Ross. The person said, well, 25% of Ross goes to Redwood High School. That's right. And so they have a stake in this. Yeah.
Is there so, a plan? Sorry. Jeff. Yes, Armel. I was wondering if there's a plan to update the sign on the property with the yes. new name. Yes, yes, we're getting a we're getting a facelift and a thermometer. Oh, that's what I missed. And it's a thermometer with books. <laughs> so a book pyramid, and I, and you, and do you is that going to be up um, before that prospect meeting? Yes. Okay. You'll all get a virtual invite to our facelift and thermometer experience. <laughs> and I, I just wanted you all to know that there is now adult supervision in the foundation, you know, just because I know you've always been a little skeptical. So we now have adult supervision. We like that youthful adolescent in, uh, energy, though, too, Joe. Adolescent is rounding up. Um, <laughs> yeah, keep it up, Joe. Great job. <laughs> Good to hear the progress for sure. Yes. Um, so that's all the news from Lake Wobegon. Um, all the librarians are above average. <laughs> well, thank you, Serena, for jumping onto that uh, project. My pleasure. Uh, no. Thank you. Serena. It's a, wonderful, it's a wonderful project, and it, we can be successful if people are willing to reach out and open doors for us. Well, we're excited to work with you. Well, yes. wonderful. Thank you Serena, very much. Serena, welcome. I, I love your background. I look forward to sending some names your way and to engaging. Wonderful. Perfect. Thank you, Jonathan. All right. Enjoy the rest of your meeting. It's going so quickly. I wish all our meetings would go like this. Shh. <laughs> we'll see you guys. Thanks, right. Jeff. Bye-bye. Well, Bye, Bye Joe. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Status reports, Frank, so no, from anybody? Do we have yeah, anything so out let me, there? Let me, um, Barbara, the president of the Friends is here, so let me move her up to Thanks. the panel. Um, here, I'm promoting you, Barbara, so you can turn your camera on and your uh, microphone. Hi, there guys. <laughs> Wow, um, it's great to see everybody. And weren't those two an impressive group? They're awesome. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh, I uh, I am so um, val. You know, just I feel I feel so confident with our futures in their hands, um, and so very hopeful. Uh, perhaps now more than ever in this whole process. So. Uh, Climb on board if you can, and by all means, uh, get those names to Joe and Serena, because they do a lovely job once they do, you know, they approach it like they say, which is just um, informational, and that's exactly where everything starts. So um, I'll just bring you up to speed uh, with the uh, what the friends are doing, and uh, we've had a really uh, pleasant uh, and productive spring, I think. Um, one of our new members uh, suggested that we open, that we approach uh, the laundromat in town owned by um, Bill Howard and uh, make it a, um, a site for uh, free children's books that um, can be taken or, you know, read on site or, you know, just kind of freshen up um, and, and, and get expend, extend our library outreach. So Bill Howard graciously said yes, and uh, Copperfield Books donated some books, and we've been picking up, you know, used children's books all over and in, 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 in used bookstores and from and from some donors. So that will well, that will um, roll out next week. And uh, I know Franklin, you got a couple things to review from um, uh, uh, from Thank Diana, you. whose idea it was, uh, Diana St. James, but. We'll, we'll do our best to find other locations uh, to, you know, to expand our outreach uh, because we've got a lot of books. We've got probably pretty close to 200 right now. So it'll be lots of, uh, it'll, it'll be very nice. Uh, and we are uh, sort of wrapping up our uh, membership drive for 2021. We'll continue to get donations through the rest of the year. 
but we've, we're down about a third from the last two years, uh, but we're still, you know, at a respectable number. We, although we had very few new members this year, only 11, we had 90 returning members. So that was really uh, gratifying. Um, I wanted to say special thanks to Armel and Michael Futterman and Michelle's mom, Marie, who, uh, you know, remembered us this year. And I guess the, only, the last thing I'd say is uh, I did make a call to the folks at uh, Redwood, High School, Redwood High School about using their parking lot in the fall for touch a truck. Andy, this is just for you. And they know we're still interested. I'm kind of on the fence about um, wondering if it's a, a, if by the early part of fall, you know, September, October, we will be ready to put that into place or whether we wait until the spring. So I'm just going to see what the next couple months bring and how much you know, nor normalcy we get back and how, you know, things sort of smooth out because, you know, I want, uh, I want it to do, I want to do it right. And perhaps it's an opportunity also for us to roll out the new library to the community at the same time, mm -hmm. you know, which would, which would be in the spring, not in this coming fall. So I'm just open to, you know, thinking that through, but by no means uh, is it, uh, you know, we're considering it our first event and we're looking forward to it. Do, do, on, I, I appreciate that, uh, Barbara, but the one thing I have noticed is that many organizations are sending or preparing for the reopening. So these will be busy months. And uh, it, it, it may be a good idea to, to hold the date or to just uh, have a, a placeholder on people's calendar or in their mind or even at the school or else um, you will be ready to go, but there will be no weekend available or no, no capacity. I, well, I, I, I will I have I will seen that with Armel, but that's almost equally uh, compelling to, to run it in the spring because things are just going to get so busy and sort of diffused and and things and disorder you know just people will uh, you know i just uh, I, I don't uh, i can certainly pick a date but um you know it, it will depend on um you know how, how how businesses will be able to you know support us and all kind of other factors so perhaps a longer planning period might be good we, the friends do take a couple of months off in the summers. Uh, June will be our last, um, and it's a casual meeting until uh, August. So it's just, it's, it's a lot to prepare for the early part of fall. Yes. There's just a lot of unknowns. So, but I'm, I'm happy. I mean, that's very good input and I'm happy to take whatever thoughts you, you guys have. Another consideration, Barbara, is that uh, younger, you know, children and younger age kids are will have access to the vaccine, but still slowly. And, you know, rest of world is, is still, you know, not out of this, you know, by any stretch. So there's some, you know, you know, real likelihood that co COVID might not have cleared, you know, by the fall for an event like this with kids. Mm -hmm. um, the spring feels like a safer bet. You know, mm -hmm. on top of the other reasons so far. Yeah. So actually, it's a good point, uh, Jonathan, because, you know, for us, we're still at home. We're both vaccinated, but the kids aren't. So, you know, we're still not. We just school's the only place we we can we we, we manage the exposure. Right. Because they're a little little. So. Yeah, that, and that might not happen till early next year for, you know, kids, you know, under six. Yeah. Yeah. And there's actually a, a new element that's arisen in the last few years where you know the fall you can get smoked out Ugh, and yeah. you know that's those true. fire those fire trucks may not be available too mm -hmm. they have a lot better possibility of being available in the spring than in the fall yeah all very, very good points and very welcome input but i would certainly defer to your wisdom and organizational skills to you know, play it by ear if you think something can happen or what mm -hmm. we can do to support anything that you might want to use and fill in a placeholder at some point too. Thank, thank you, Jeff. Frankly, September or October feels pretty too soon. You know, I, if I do it, I would like to make a big splash and, you know, have it very well organized and, 
and you know feel like it's going to be very well attended and um, not sort of seat at the pants. And so that that's that is my feeling. That makes sense, especially yeah. if um, if you do not meet over the summer. It only leaves you a couple months to put right. the net, right. and there's so many unknowns. Yeah. Um, so well, I would also I do see, I see value in linking it with the community learning about the you know new library fundraising. I could see that as a natural tie-in, and and they're not ready. I mean, they won't. Right. Uh, Serena is won't has already said that fall is too soon to do that. I'm, I'm with Barbara. I think that's the best point. I mean, obviously I'm in agreement with everyone else that maybe it's too soon, but linking it to the rollout mm -hmm. and to really be able to like have a lot of us who are coming to, who are involved, who have kids, but also really talk it up. Right. And, right. and be able to link it. Cause to me, it's a big raising awareness thing. And what you might find as well is you may have grandparents that come with grandkids and, you know, other people that maybe aren't as, you know, in tune with what's going on. And um, I think there's big opportunities to link it. So I love that concept. Yeah. And I'm happy to, you know, within kind of my age group, like highlight it and send it to a bunch of people and other organizations and, you know. And I do the people. same in my age group. <laughs> I'm just saying with little kids. <laughs> age group that has well, I guess you'll be depletive people yeah. we'll, we'll split the street in two Andy you... <laughs> well great thanks guys thank you Jeff for the comment about the smoke I had totally forgotten about that too Ugh. well yeah, especially too since fire season he's already started so and this is in and, and I, I for us at the library we're just waiting for those June 15th guidelines to really see because I know the writing group wants to get back together um, that people want to come inside and do programs inside story time. We want to do back in live in person again. Um, but it's, yeah, it's just to get those guidelines and how many people we can have um, in a space. And right now, the, um, and that's something I was talking to the rec supervisor this morning about people are already asking us about September and we're just not hundred percent sure on what the new guidelines are going to say. Um, and it's also, they're very confusing. Um, so a lot of people who have indoor spaces, um, indoor venues or outdoor venues, there's all these different guidelines on what you can and cannot do. Um, and then there's still the question, can you ask somebody um, to show proof of vaccination? Um, I know most people are getting used to it, but um, there's still some people like the gentleman we had yesterday who refused to wear his mask properly yeah. and um, was arguing with the staff about wearing the mask um, properly. So. Um, yeah, it's, I think uh, I, I was hoping that we would be back to normal by fall, but I, I just we need to see these guidelines for June. And then if that's when the friends are on vacation, Barbara, that's not going to be really, I'm hoping that it will be back to normal. But as you said, it is also fire season. So hopefully knock on wood, nothing is happening and um, it's calm, but the spring might be a better, better, bigger kickoff for everybody. So, yeah. Well, your comment uh, triggers two questions uh, from me. Um, Franklin, is there any way an outdoor event could be, or even a program or story time or something small be done at the site of the new library just to stake the site as a library, uh, a place where library event or program would be? Something it would be small? easier if there was actually park there. It's just all gravel at the moment. So yeah. it's really just not the most ideal spot to, and I think it's pretty much all boarded up right now too. We'd have to have public works open up part of the fence for us to get into it. Yeah, um, it's not difficult. Lots of high school kids have figured out a way, to, and a lot of dog <laughs> owners have figured out a way to get into that. Just, yeah. Just to stake, just to, stake the, uh, to stake the territory, to just remind people that this well, is- Well, that's what me and Teresa were talking about for this summer. We want to put a banner for summer reading on the fence there. So people see that, you know, especially because that's a high traffic area for, for parents. Yeah. Is Doherty. They're is going by that spot. Mm -hmm. Just making sure that people know this is like. Yeah, that we, we are planning to be there. We, it hasn't been abandoned. <laughs> the other goal. question is, you mentioned twice now about this patron who just was not wearing his mask properly. What, um, what can you do? What can well, you do? Uh, the city uh, manager just basically told me, why didn't you be called the police? 
And I think the threat of calling the police would, you know, scare this person. But we were, um, we knew that we were going to have a few patrons who were like this just because when we first shut down, there were people arguing with that this was all a hoax outside in the parking lot. So we know that we're going to, but I reminded the staff that if they come through the door and they don't have their mask on, it's like, you cannot come in, you need to go back outside. Um, if you can't wear your mask out properly, you need to go outside, you cannot come in. And if they, and since the city managers already said, why don't we just call the police? That's what we'll do, we'll call the police. So I, I, my worry is that by the time the police get over here, the person will be long gone, but at least they know that we've called the police and we're, we're taking it seriously. Because my frustration is it's, even though they may think it's a hoax, they're putting other people's children and other members of the community at risk because you know the staff are all vaccinated, we're all, but we have people who are bringing their children to the library um, who come in, who are now coming in more frequently. So it's just having to remind people that, and we have the signs up, but it's, it, yeah, it's one of these things that we just have to enforce and people, and I know the staff are really um, nervous about confronting people, but since the city manager gave us a blessing just call the police we'll call the police so i think that's the right thing to do friends good yeah i'm for, glad you for, have for it safety mm -hmm. yes um, i'm all set so i'm going to drop off thank you it was great to see everybody thank you barbara thank you, barbara. Thank you, barbara. Barbara. Michelle, barbara. Thank you for your years of service we're really going to miss you thank you i'll see you in the neighborhood yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Bye bye. Um, bye, Barbara. Okay, I think we're on um, future agenda items. Are there things that people want to add to the list of things for Franklin for next month? Or, Franklin, do you have some things that you'd like us to discuss in a month? Or, yeah, at the moment, I don't have anything to discuss, <laughs> um, but we'll, we'll continue to, to just give you reports on what's going on. But if there's something else that you would like to talk about, just let me know or something you'd like to be updated on, we're going to go over again. So, Franklin, can I ask you just to um, review, is QList not going to be used now because of its capacity limit? Yeah, we, what we've decided to do is instead of using the QList to do the queuing to get into the library, we're going to use it to make reservations with the librarian. It works better as a, um, and this is why when we originally got it, we originally thought we would only be letting like four people in at a time. Um, and it works uh, the way the other departments are using it. They're using it as just scheduling software. So someone in planning makes an appointment to see someone in the planning department from 10 to 11. So what we decided to do was to use it as a, if you need to, a reference services, like if you need technology help, you can make an appointment. To, to say I need technology help so you can come in and meet one-on-one -on -one with the librarian to get the help with setting up your, your device to get ebooks in, in overdrive. We just have to go back and remodel all of that, um, what the tickets are, and then we can launch that. So I think it would be better um, for the librarians because we're not gonna get that many volumes for using the library. Librarians as much as we are for just getting to use the library. And we originally, like I said, we thought when we first got it last year, we thought we'd only be letting in about four people. And, um, but it just, the software does not work. Once we got it going, it wasn't working the way we had planned on it to be working. Um, but it works better if you just have a, you've made an appointment and then you come at your appointment time. So, um, and I think some of the, the patrons were getting confused. Um, some patrons didn't have a phone. They were just coming to the library. So it just makes it easier for the bulk of our, our patrons just to come in and get out. And it's like I said, and so far, nobody, and this is the same, I think when I was talking to Linda at San Anselmo, they rarely ever get to that capacity limit. We don't have that many, and it's because too, there is no place to sit down. So when people really just come in, they browse, they get their books or get their holds, um, and, and then they're out. So, and occasionally someone will talk, but most people are just happy to get in, to look around, to find their books, and they get their books and they go, so. And is the capacity limit still 15? Yeah, right now it's, it's actually 14. So if we have more staff come on board, it, that, that capacity limit goes down. So if we add two more people, it'll go down to 13. Um, we have 14 right now just because there's days where the volunteer comes in. So we just made it easier to have 14. Um, so they have the, the staff and the patrons to have that in their head, but that's how many people can be in the building. So, Have you had a queue outside? I mean, have you ever had more than 14 wanting to come in at once? So no. there's no real queue yeah. for reservation. Yeah, so in. that was what was funny. It's like we had people, you know, make the reservations 
and a few people um, didn't even show up with their appointment time because you. The, what was funny is you could summon them with the with the, the the text, and they have five minutes to come to come to the door. But we would summon people that they just never would show up, or they'd show up an hour later because they forgot that they had this. And then we had one lady who kept getting text messages after she'd even visited the library. She kept getting a text message saying, "Hey, your time is this and time," because it would give you a. A of how much time you had so it was some really odd things going on with it but it's just it's right now it's easier we, we have a clipboard we have a, a little clicker to count the people and the staff know how to relock the door and we have a sign that says please wait we're at capacity but um yesterday too we like i said we only had um for the most part it's been very slow and steady but we've not got to that 14 people in one hour yet so or at one time thank you but it's only been a week, right? Yeah, this is, tomorrow will be our third day, so we'll see. And the, the word is slowly getting out that we're open. Okay. So that was why I thought, you know, this was at least our, our slow, um, soft launch. And then once we get get people um, knowing that we're open. But I like I said, we've had people who are really, they just really like the curbside service now. And they're, they don't <laughs> want to get out of their car and come to the library. They, they're like, oh, no, we'll come tomorrow when it's curbside. Um, so I think, I think that, that shows you that once we get the locker, the locker will be very popular. Yeah. Um, but when, and once, because once we fully reopen, we won't be able to do curbside at the same time. We just don't have enough staff to do it at the same time. So. Well, I'm delighted that you're open. I know my wife and son, a seven-year-old, visited last week and came home with a huge bag of books, which has <laughs> been awesome. So we're putting it, we're putting it to use. Yeah. And that's what I've been telling parents, come, come by, bring your kids and get some books. So that we're hopefully we'll have more and more people. And more and more people that I talk to that live in Kent and, Kentville and Ross are really excited to come in and browse. So I have a lady who, who ran out of reading material. And I told her, tomorrow's a big day. Come in and find some new books for yourself. So they're really thrilled. So I think we're going to start picking up and we'll see. And we'll see if we hit that capacity limit at one hour in one, one spot. But so far, I think most people have been really good about pacing themselves. So. And leaving and leaving a mm -hmm. not staying there for 45 minutes. You say, yeah, because I think without any place to sit down, the kids are more easy to plop down because we had a young lady who plopped down on the stairs to look at books. Um, but for the most part, the adults are not getting down, to, to, they're not sitting down yet to, to look at stuff. And Mr. Holmes, who wanted to use the copier, um, he's very happy that the copier is available. Um, again, because he thought when he thought when it wasn't in the hallway anymore that we got rid of it. But I explained to him we just got moved into the, the library because we can't have anybody in the in the lobby yet until City Hall reopens. So, to, Franklin, to your to the best information, current is June fifteenth still the date? That is the date that the state has told us that we'll get the, we're supposed to go back to normal. So, uh, and last time, every time we've changed here. Um, they always give us the new guidelines either the day of or the day before. And so we're, we're sort of expecting that again, because this has also been um, impacting recreation. Um, we're still not renting tables. Um, we still can't allow big events to happen. And we're still not allowing indoor use of any of the facilities. But um, we're hoping to get these new guidelines that will be, um, we can see what's, what, what will change. And that was why I was still hoping for the fall, but I, I just, right now it doesn't seem likely, but we'll see what those new guidelines are. So we keep asking to get them ahead of time because then we can prepare better, but um, the state won't, won't let them out of their box yet, so. Good. Well done, Franklin. Thank you guys. Pace, pace yourself. Yeah, yeah I, I, this was a lesson today of taking Benadryl. I forgot to take my allergy medicine this morning. And so I've taken Benadryl and I have been a zombie all day long. So I'm really sorry about the, the start of the beam. So um, it all worked out just fine. So it was, it was terrific. And it was so nice to see Joe and Barbara and Serena mm -hmm. too. So that mm -hmm. was terrific. Um, I think that's it. Cause we set our meeting date already Yep. for June. Um, does anybody want to make a motion to adjourn? I move to adjourn. Second. Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, and, and someday we'll meet in person again. Yeah, when do you see? <laughs> Okie doke. Good night, everybody. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you.